Welcome to another episode of Eric Waite Whiskey Studies and in this video I'm going to do a review of the Craig Isle Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Is it worth 35 bucks? Let's find out. So this video is part of a series I'm doing on independent Isla uh, whiskeys, painted whiskeys, and uh, one of the things I am looking into is, you know, you see these bottles at, say, Total Wine and More or some of the uh, large stores, and you, maybe you never heard of them, and you're wondering, is it really worth that much? You know, it seems cheaper than the uh, core range of the Isla distilleries, you know, but is it really worth it, or is it really coming from a cask that wasn't bottled under the distillery's name because it really didn't meet their standards? And we don't know that. It could be it didn't meet the profile but still good whiskey, or it could be, eh, you know, something that didn't really fit the quality standard of the particular distillery, so you're getting a lesser quality whiskey. So you don't really know what you're getting. So I decided to do a few um, reviews of these whiskeys and let you know what I think of them. Now, particularly since this is a really good deal at 35 bucks, you know, whiskey's now getting more and more expensive. I'm now seeing the Ardbeg 10-year-old, uh, one of my favorites, at 55, 65, even 70 dollars. The prices are going up and up and up. So we got to have our eyes open for deals that may still be out there. But before we get into this, let me tell you a little bit about this whiskey and a few others available from Craig Isle. It's produced by Quality Spirits International in Glasgow, Scotland. It is a single malt from an undisclosed distillery. It is a non-age statement, bottled at 40% alcohol by volume, and sells for anywhere between $30 and $35. Craig Isle also releases a 12-year-old bottled at 42.2% alcohol by volume, sells for about $39. A 25-year-old bottled at 43.8% alcohol by volume sells for about $200. And a 33-year-old bottled at 44.1% alcohol by volume sells for about $250. So one of the things you may notice is I'm not using a Glen Cairn because the reality is by the time I do a review of a whiskey, I already know what it smells and tastes like. I already know what I'm going to say. I don't understand whiskey tubers who have been going through a bottle, they've got it fairly low, and yet they just sort of mull over a whiskey for 15, 20, 30 minutes as if they've never tasted it before, struggling to come up with their notes. You're gonna tell me you've never had that whiskey before? I mean, it, you've got it halfway down the bottle. You should know what it smells and tastes like before you even pick it up. I could tell you what an Ardbeg 10 tastes like. I've gone through six of them. I don't need the bottle in front of me for me to tell you what it smells and tastes like because I know it by art, right? I know it by my liver. I've had so many of them. So uh, I don't need a Glen Cairn for this whiskey, uh, but I do enjoy casually drinking whiskeys from a uh, rocks glass, specifically uh, from this Spey um, uh, Rito glass. Uh, it's nice and hefty. I like the design of it. I like the feel of it. Uh, this is my preferred casual drinking glass. So I I'm going to tell you a little bit about this whiskey and wh what I've been experiencing and working my way through the bottle. Now the bottle's fairly dark, really, really dark, but I can see if I put it up the light, it's about right here. I spent plenty of time with it. Now painted whiskeys take a little bit of time to sort of really open up. Uh, uh, my pattern has been, if it's a painted whiskey, open it up, taste it, put it back in the cork, and then let it sit for maybe a week or two. So if I'm gonna do a review, I need to start opening them up maybe a, six weeks ahead before I'm gonna actually start to get into it. And keep going back to it, maybe a little bit in one week, a little bit the next week, a little bit the next week, before I actually get into it, because it needs time to really open up. And I'm really glad that I'm doing that because I'll be honest with you, my first impressions of this whiskey were not all that great. I was really disappointed. When I first tried this whiskey, it was thin. It felt really watery. The uh, aromas and flavors immediately disappeared. I mean, the flavors were disappearing before I even swallowed it. I would experience the whiskey in the front, in the middle, and then even before I got into the back end, it, would, it was like it's falling off a cliff. <laughs> 
now that I've been patient with the bottle, it's really come around and it's coming across really, really nice. So let me get into the aromas and flavors on this whiskey. Now, I don't know if it is non-chill filtered or if it's all natural coloring. Uh, it is matured in American oak, so probably ex bourbon cask. However, the funny thing is it has the richness of some, some sherry cask, uh, but according to the label, it's uh, American oak. Now, there are sherry casks that are American oak. Not all sherry cask uh, is aged in European cask or even Spanish oak. In fact, historically, uh, sherry was aged in American oak, as well as other regions in Spain, such as Rioja and Roberto de Duero, but those are wines. Just because it says American oak doesn't mean it's gonna be bourbon. It could still be a sherry cask. So what I get now is, it's almost like a root beer sarsaparilla character. Uh, the spice is really, really coming around. Yes, you get the smoke and you get the peat. You don't get briny or oceanic character so much. You don't get the medicinal character, saying you would in a Laphroaig. Uh, but it's got a real nice spicy character to it. Uh, and sort of like a, a root beer, but more of a natural root beer than say an artificial root beer. Get some caramel, get some chocolate. It, it is spicier than a lot of other, say, Isla whiskeys. Reminds me a little bit of a Talisker in that respect in that you're getting some pepper notes. You get some grilled stone fruit, some grilled apples, some caramel, vanilla, baking spices. Maybe a little bit of campfire smoke and sort of uh, blackened marshmallows. It has a little bit of uh, a nuttiness and in the interior of a chocolate bar on the palate. It is sweet up front, shifts towards a little bit more herbal as well as savory in the mid palate. It's a little ashy, it's a little ashy. So in terms of the smoke characteristic, uh, it's like a fire that has already gone out. That's in terms of all the variations of the different types of characteristics you can get from uh, a painted whiskey, ashiness is not one of my favorites. It doesn't offend me, it just isn't one of my favorites. If you've ever had the Ardbeg Perpetuum, it kind of reminds me a little bit like that. So it finishes dry, starts off sweet, finishes dry. A little bit of nettiness, a little bit of caramel, a little bit of chocolate, nice smokiness. And what really, really sort of grabs my attention, it's actually more of the spice character than actually the peat and smoke character. Now, it's only 40% alcohol by volume. Uh, so which when I was first trying it and actually even up until I would say uh, just a little bit past the shoulder It was feeling thin. And I was really really disappointed. I was really thinking this is not worth 35 bucks um, and, and it just didn't deliver it is now delivering what I had hoped it would from the beginning So uh, if you ever get pick up a bottle of this you're looking for a budget Isla whiskey This is one that I would Give it some air. I almost maybe even taken out of the bottle and put it into a decanter. Finish is somewhat moderate. It's it, it's there. It doesn't just drop off the cliff like it did when I originally was trying it. So it's still there. It's still lingering, but, uh, lingering, but mostly what I'm getting now is a spicy finish, but it's a spiciness, not like say, you know, Thai food, Asian food, Indian food, or, or Mexican food. It's more like a root beer on herbal uh, finish on it um, and then a little bit of ashiness following the spice I tried this on ice I don't recommend putting it on ice uh, I've tried a little bit of water and it doesn't help this is some I'm gonna want to drink neat as is don't take it any further I think they have maybe gone a little bit too far and bring that ABV down to 40% I, 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 I suspect that the better components of the cask went somewhere else. Um, namely, they just watered it down too far. Uh, I think it's good. It's an okay, a good, okay to good whiskey. If it was any more than 30 to 35 bucks, I would definitely give it a double thumbs down. However, at this price point, this price point, I think it's actually a pretty good buy. 
What am I gonna give it in terms of a score? I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna give it like 85 points, a solid 85 points. It's a good budget whiskey, uh, not necessarily the most uh, complex, um, but uh, at least it doesn't break the bank. It's just a good solid whiskey, nothing mind blowing here, uh, but if you're on a budget and you want something peated and you want something that, you know, it does scratch the peated itch when you're in the mood for something peated, um, then this is a whiskey that I would recommend. If you're a whiskey aficionado and you're really, 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 really into Isla whiskeys and you really have a nice collection of Isla whiskeys and you're thinking of put, adding something a little different to your collection, this is probably not what you're looking for. This is not what you're looking for. Uh, this is a, a whiskey for people who are looking to save a buck, who are looking for a different angle and a, a more entry level approach to getting into Isla whiskeys. Alrighty, uh, that's it for this review. If you subscribe to this channel, I want to thank you very much. If you've not yet subscribed, but you like watching my videos, I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I go live. And I want to thank all my uh, Patreons for supporting this work. And until next time, Slanjiva. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.